you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about molecular testing labs? I mean, I can see, you know, the CAP and the CLIA certifications, and yeah. I mean, what, what's yeah. the importance of those things? Well, uh, great talk, by the way, and thank you for having me here. It's uh, really nice to see everyone out here. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, so as Mark said, I'm from Molecular Testing Labs. Uh, molecular Testing Labs, or MTL, is a laboratory in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, we have a lot of key ideas on the type of testing that we like to offer. Uh, one of the primary key areas for us is innovation. We decided a long time ago we didn't want to develop tests that other people had. We wanted to get our own team of scientists together and have them develop these very novel but very useful tests that people could use. Um, so we relied heavily on hiring PhDs and MDs and scientists as part of our team. Uh, so from there, we were able to develop tests like the molecular fitness test that you just heard about, uh, as well as many other ones. Uh, another key component to what we do that we feel is really truly important at molecular testing labs is that the tests that we're offering are accurate and they've been vetted through not just our scientists, but they've been vetted through uh, physicians and uh, other clinical medical professionals. So we often try to publish our research so in peer-reviewed journals so that other people can review it and ensure that it is accurate what we're saying. So uh, when you see something like the Mole uh, Molecular Testing Lab's fitness test, that is two to four years worth of research behind it before it gets to be a product that we can put out there for the consumer to use. Pretty impressive. You know, um, I, I'm going to ask a question that I very well uh, may regret to a guy that has more initials behind his name than I have in my name. But, um, I mean, that's impressive. But uh, if you could explain to me how the uh, genetics and fitness report works. I mean, explain to me how the DNA component actually works. Yeah, <clears throat> so everybody has DNA in their body. Uh, DNA is composed of three billion base pairs. So every cell of your body has three billion base pairs of DNA. DNA, you may have heard, is A, T, G, or C. These are the molecules that are linked together to make that long chain of DNA. And then there's enzymes that read those molecules, and that's the code for the protein that's gonna be made. So if it's perfect, no problem, the protein is perfect and it works the way it's supposed to. Now, if you get what's called a SNP, which is a single point mutation. So if that's supposed to be an ATG and you have an ATC, it changes the structure of the protein that's being encoded. Now that protein may not work as well as the original protein, or it may not work at all. So depending on what you're talking about, the protein has a direct impact on the way you may metabolize, uh, uh, let's say, a, a protein, or the way you may metabolize carbohydrates, or the way your body may process vitamins. Vitamins are strongly susceptible to this type of polymorphism. Um, you can have one point, and that's it, and it can throw off the entire cycle of the way your body processes vitamins. Uh, vitamin K, B12, even vitamin C, they're all affected by this. With a test like this, though, you can get guidance on the level of, of vitamins that you need to keep yourself up at a safe level, and also guidance on the types of foods that you should uh, focus on to ensure that you're getting the vitamins that you need. Um, they're just very small examples. Uh, you, Mark, I heard you mention a couple of examples. Uh, you mentioned CrossFit. So from the uh, exercise side of things, there are people who are just not meant to do certain exercises. Um, you go to the gym every day and you see, and you're running on your treadmill, and you see that person next to you running on the treadmill, and every month you see that person getting slimmer and fitter, and what's happening to you? You feel like you're maybe put on a pound, right? And it's just not working. It doesn't mean that you're not working as hard as that person next to you. What it means is you're working the wrong way. You need guidance. You need to know how to approach exercise. You cannot overpower your genes. Your genes are there. They make you everything that you are. So you need to embrace them and learn how to use them to your advantage. 
you can maximize the benefits by having something like this test, which is really a guide. It's a roadmap for you to follow through life as you're trying to maximize your, your uh, benefits from working out, from getting your nutrition, from dieting, from preventing putting weight back on after dieting, um, and from preventing injury. Uh, there's a gene that can tell you that you may rupture your Achilles tendon. Uh, just knowing that means you wear a certain style of shoe, you do certain stretches on your Achilles tendons before you uh, exercise, and you wear a certain arch support, and then you have nothing to worry about. But you need to know. So, so I want to, I want, I mean, Woo! I want to break this down to its, to its most simple form. I mean, so, so let's first, let's use CrossFit as an example. Okay, I, I was doing CrossFit. I was getting results. I was, I was getting the benefits, but I was also getting the injury. Tell me what's happening inside my body when I'm doing things that are adverse to the way I was designed. Yeah, so there's numerous things that can happen. Um, so a really good one uh, is a tissue injury. Let's go back to the tendinopathy we were talking about. If someone has a normal <laughs> tendon or normal predisposition for tissue injury, what they do and what most of the uh, population does is perfectly fine. When you try to mimic that, you have an altered protein. It's a protein that's not gonna allow you to put as much stress on that muscle or as much stress on that tendon. Um, it doesn't mean you can't exercise. It doesn't mean you can't use that muscle or tendon. You need to know how to strengthen the muscles around it and use it the right way. So um, without knowing your genetic predisposition, you're basically taking a shot in the dark. If you wanna minimize the risk of injury, and maximize the benefits, you need to know what your genetic profile is. And what we did was we picked all of the primary ones, all of the most important ones, the top ones, the ones that have been researched the most with the most accurate interpretation, and we compiled it into a manual that you can use. And we put it in such a way that you can look at it for everything from beginning to end, or you can focus on the diet, the nutrition, the vitamins, the exercise, the injury portion of it. They, um, it, it. It's built like a book, almost with like a table of contents. You can focus on the areas that you need in that book. So, you know, the, the last question I have for you, and it's probably the most important, we, we had this discussion earlier on, is, What's the power of taking the, the genetics and now adding it to the personalized nutrition that Ivy Lab has to offer? Yeah, as you can imagine, it's, it's uh, several fold the power. Um, everything, everything that happens to you, so there's two components, you have your genetics, you have environment, right? If you walk in front of a truck and get hit, that's purely environmental. <laughs> if you get a really nasty genetic disease, that's purely genetic, but then there's an overlap. So let's say you have a genetic predisposition for skin cancer. You can decrease or increase that risk by going out in the sun, that's the environment, right? So they do overlap. So what we're doing with this test is we're adding a third component, and the third component is personal choice. What personal choice? Are you going to be a couch potato? Or are you going to get up and go to the gym and use this information properly? So the power that it adds to what's already out there is, is it's many levels up. Uh, we all know that there's a lot of general recommendations that work for most people, right? You hear caloric restriction and exercise. Well, caloric restriction may not work for everybody if you're restricting carbohydrates and you really shouldn't be restricting carbohydrates, right? And exercise doesn't work for everybody if you have fast twitch muscles and you're trying to do power and endurance. You need to know how to adjust your regimen or you're wasting your time, you're not maximizing your benefits, and you're potentially going to get hurt. Woo! Let's give a big hand for